It's just so big. It's kind of humorous. Like, I'll go to events wearing this, and people will just take pictures because it's just so funny. <laughs> it looks like a bobblehead. <laughs> So I finally made it to, oh, then Andrew, big in the Overwatch, man. Thanks. What's up, man? Hey, Nate, doing? man. Nice to meet you. Uh, how long you been uh, living around here in Georgia? It's been 15 years now. 15 years. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what's your setup, man? Just inside my house, it's just, I mean, it's nothing super special. <laughs> This room is freaking amazing. <laughs> oh my god, I was so geeking out when I came into this room. Oh man, Andrew, you got the room, man. He got the room. This is my childhood right here. Yeah, most of this is my childhood. This is your childhood. No, it's not my childhood. It's his childhood. <laughs> Uh, you got this little setup, this gaming setup right here. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I made it for me and my buddies because you know, like land Halo 1 and all that stuff, so no one would have to bring their stuff over. You could uh -huh. just jump on it. Oh, landing. Those were the days, man. <laughs> I remember back in the days, man. I, I, like People used to come over and play poker. No, no, no. Back then, it was just Halo night. Yeah. Halo 1, connecting all the <laughs> systems together. I love the systems you got, man. All the custom systems. I had the reach one right there, the reach system right there. I have that one. Ah, that's one of my favorite systems. Yeah, someone actually was about to throw away the Halo like one Xbox one over there, and I was like, no, I'll take it, and it worked perfectly fine. They try to throw us away, and it still works. Yeah, everything works on it and everything. All right, yep, there you go. <laughs> oh man, it works! It's alive! It's alive! Oh, oh no! It sucks that people don't know what they have, man. They just throw it away. People, look at what you have. You don't know. You don't know. You know, my favorite, my favorite expansion was um, the uh, Tain King. I Tain really, King. I really enjoyed every minute of it, especially the story and the lore as far as the Taken King. They hyped up the king, and they did. Yeah, they, they did, did it perfectly. Um, I like the first raid the best. I think that was just my most favorite. We crawl into the caves yeah. and everything. So I think that was my most favorite. It was something, you know, just something new. Yeah, exactly. So, no, there no. Was, there wasn't any other game kind of like it. Zoe. Oh, oh, what's up? What you playing? Oh wait, Zoe, are you playing yourself? Yeah, she's not even playing. What are you playing, Zoe? Okay. <laughs> hey. Yeah, she's a gamer. Ah, they, oh yeah, my nephews are gamers too, man. They're growing up to be gamers. Oh snap! There is a Magnum from the original Halo One. Okay, can you, can you, can you, can you just? I, I just want to hold it. I'm like, did you, did you make that? Did you make that? Oh, oh my God! Oh, ho, ho. original Halo One pistol. Halo One pistol. Can I hold it? Yes. Can I, oh my God! Uh, oh my God! Ah, uh, uh, it's amazing. Woo, it's amazing. Uh, it usually has a clip that goes in the bottom of it. Oh, really? Oh, okay, I see. I see right there. Spring loaded. Yeah. Oh man, if I if you guys ever want to, you know, cosplay, this is the gun right here. This is all you need. You need the halo helmet. Oh, that too. That too. Hold this real quick. What's happening? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh no, no he didn't. What is that, a custom, a motorcycle Master Chief helmet. Nice. Yeah, yeah, put it on, put it on, put it on. Looks like a bobblehead on me though. Really? <laughs> yeah, kind of humorous. Like I'll go to events wearing this and people will just take pictures because it's just so funny. <laughs> it looks like a bobblehead. <laughs> there's, there's, there's the gun, Chief. That's <laughs> all I need to cosplay right there. It'd be like a bobblehead. <laughs> Edition. You, he looks like a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love the the DOT approved. DOT approved. 
All right, guys. We sold the gaming room. We sold everything. All the collections. Crazy. But now it's time for the main event. What well, we came here to see, Andrew's art. The way he makes his 3D models uh, through these 3D machines is crazy. Like, show me, man. Just show me. Talk about it. Okay. First off, usually, like, if I'm designing something, I'll use SketchUp or other programs. It assists me. Um, this right here is a uh, Titan Eye for one of the ghosts. For, okay. For a custom order. And then from there, we'll take it. Over here to uh, Kira, and this is what the printers use. Now you can put it in Kira, and this lot here will actually show you the layers of what the printer is going to be doing. So you can make sure it doesn't do anything crazy or whack. Then from there, you just save it to an SD card. Uh huh. Bring it over to the printers. Make sure you have the settings all correct, and then just press print. So. No way. I know it's, it's, is it that simple to work a machine like this? No, not really. I just dumbed it you, down. Okay, you just made it. You made it seem simple, but really, there's work, actual work that has to be yeah. done if just right. Say if you were to buy a, a cheaper printer, they will work, unless you know a lot about these machines. You have to make sure everything's calibrated correctly. You got to make sure your temperatures are correct. Make sure your environment's correct. Make sure that everything's sticking to your print bed. Okay, so there's a science behind all. Yeah, there is a little bit of magic. science. I do like these machines a lot, they are very reliable. And how much do these machines run for? This one right here is a little over three thousand. Three thousand dollars. Oh man, three smackaroos. Oh man. It's one of the larger print printers you can get. This is an average size printer over here. Okay. And they actually have smaller ones. But this is what the ghost will look like when it's finished. This is actually uh glow in the dark filament. Oh so, wow. This is actually completely hollow. It doesn't have any, there's nothing inside of it. It's just thick interior walls. Hmm. And you can feel it, it feels strong, it's not gonna break. I mean, you can you can try breaking it, just don't cut yourself. Okay, <laughs> okay. Ah, ah, no, no. This so over here is printing out a thorn, actually. The handle for the thorn. Really? Yes. It should be done in 23 minutes, roughly. It's just an estimate. It's very lightweight, it's good for cosplay. It's not made of metal, so it should be allowed in most conventions. They're really against like metal blades or especially a metal gun. <laughs> All right, now we just saw the science behind the magic, and now I'm gonna see the completed product. When I saw this, I was just geeking out about it because it's amazing. Oh my god, it's a Haka Moon. I know it's Hawk Moon, but I like to say Haka Moon. <laughs> look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. It's not completely finished. Just the prototype. I have to change the handle on it. The newer skin for the newer Hawk Moon, when I first saw it, it had a black trigger and I assumed this part was black. When this needs to be gold, gold, and then the new emblem on there. It's freaking amazing. It's very light. It's not bad. Like, oh. This one is not hollow either. It's very light too, it's not, and not even hollow. That's freaking crazy. Wow. Man, this is this is beautiful. And you did you did the painting pretty yeah, much? I did all you the see painting. see all the feathers there? All the, you have to use Bondo, glue, everything else. Wow. Ah, oh, man. Here, I'll open it up for you, too. Really? Okay, let's open it up. Revolver comes out on it. And it spins on it. There's actually a bullet goes into it, but it's not painted yet, so, but that is the bullet. But... Oh, yeah, uh, you said you had more uh, products that you, you just yeah. made? So when you order from us, this is what it looks like right here. Oh, this is how it comes? Yeah. Okay, so it comes out uh, pretty packed up, okay. Safe with bubble bu wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Ooh, it's a ghost. Yeah, this is the the Red Bull ghost. The Red Bull ghost. Oh, ho, ho. look at him. He looks so cute. And of course, you know, it's magnetic. See back here, you turn this knob right here. It'll light up. Ooh. How much do these run? These run from. I believe our cheapest one is 89 to 110, but usually if you get more than one, or if you're a local customer, we'll hook you up, so. Okay, if you're local, you get hooked up. This is uh, actually my own custom design. Ooh, an orbit ghost. Yeah, one of the factions. And there you go, it lights up and it has the dead orbit emblem on it. Wow. The blood splatter. Well, here's the, the Crimson Ghost. Oh, wow. 
Oh my god, girls were going crazy for this one. Look, look at the colors. I don't know why, oh. but this is like one of my favorite. I guess because of the paint scheme, it's just the, the fade effect. Well, I, I love the, the, the color scheme here. It's pink, red, and then the glow just adds to it. Yeah, I guess I can see how the girls love the glitter. <laughs> the glitter, <laughs> you got glitter. some glitter. But this right here was actually something I designed and did. These uh, are Overwatch. Overwatch. These are uh, coasters I actually used in a 3D printer right here. And this is actually printed with uh, bamboo. Wow. So I believe it's like 30, 40% bamboo and the rest is plastic. Wow, okay. And it's been and stained it and resin. All right, so Andrew, tell me, like uh, what gave you the drive to start working on these uh, 3D models, 3D printings? Well. I worked for a company. Uh -huh. I was a project manager there uh -huh. and did uh, quotes, estimates, and 3D renderings. Long story short, I was supposed to be paid a certain amount after being there for three months or so. And I busted my butt there. I was working off the clock, you know, at home. They decided they, they just wanted to let me go. And when that happened, I was just, I was like, I'm just, I'm just fed up with working for someone else. <laughs> I had the 3D rendering experience because I went to the college for it, but I was just trying to find a way, how can I use my college degree and not put it to waste. I took a risk just, you know, investing in buying these printers and doing cosplay and just trying to invent new things. I mean, luckily this is something that, you know, the market's buying, so if it wasn't, then it would just be a hobby. But hey, I hey, still, hey, you know. <laughs> make a hobby into something profitable. That's the American dream right there. Yeah. That's a dream. <laughs> All right, everyone. I just want to let you guys know, if you guys are interested in showcasing your works through my channel, uh, your collections, your art, your gaming rooms, let me know at my Gmail, Geeking Out. It'll be on the description down below. Send me some pictures of your areas and, you know, what you do. Like your cosplays, your artwork, pop culture, gaming, anime, the works. Just let me know. Definitely, I definitely want to try and come by, show the world what you got. All right, everyone. We've just experienced Andrew's gaming room slash workshop. His little workshop with the 3D printing was just amazing. Like, I was geeking out every time he was just talking about the details that he put into his work. Andrew, thank you. Thank you for letting me come by, man. It was no it was a fun experience, man. One shot 3D printing. So you guys go over there and check out his products. If next year you guys want to go and try to get your Dragon Con cosplays, you know, complete. So something you want to plan out for next year, get an Andrew. And if you're a local, he'll probably hook you up big time. One shot 3D printings. Go to them. Go to them. Other than that, everyone, thank you for checking us out and geeking out. I'm your shoe, Dave Meister. And today with Andrew and Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Say hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I made a fun of with you. Always. <laughs>